Hi guys, so the other day when I was scrapbooking, remember when I came to this point where I was picking out enamel dots? Well, this annoyed me more than it used to. So it's been a while since I scrapbooked and I, I don't know, I used to store my enamel dots like this in this, this is a three compartment drawer that goes in a unit that looks like an apothecary unit. Um, and it's by Recollections or Jetmax or whoever makes those. And every time I picked out enamel dots, I would have to bring out all these sheets because I kept them on their sheets. And when possible, I would uh, keep the little manufacturer sheet that goes with it just so that I'd know who made which enamel dots, which is really not all that important. Uh, so yesterday I spent the day doing this. <laughs> I cut up all of my enamel dots into strips and then I kept a couple of empty strips that I could put some stray ones on when I found some stray ones. And for my whole entire enamel dots collection, it took me about maybe an hour or two to get to the point where I had all these little piles of colored, um, color-coded enamel dot strips. And from here, I decided that I would take these packages and actually not split them up because as you can see, I would have to take off and restick every single one of them. Like there's no easy way to cut those into strips. And so I decided to just leave those on the cards that they were already on. And I just wanted to walk you through the process of how I did this. So here's the drawer that they used to be in and I'm actually going to still store them in the same drawer. So these pieces, these packages that I'm not changing will just go in the back here. they will be my multicolored packages of enamel dots. And then I have, at this point in the video, I have already done all of my greens. So I just wanted to show you how they look. And basically what I did was I just took my ATG and I glued each of those strips on to these cards that I cut from just plain white cardstock. I used a low quality cardstock um, and because I didn't want to waste any good cardstock for this project. And I just glued with my ATG each strip, as many strips as I could onto each of those cards. The cards are cut specifically to fit in this container. And so for me, because I'm fitting them in this container, I cut my cards to three and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches long. Long. And as you can see, they fit perfectly. I didn't want them to be too snug. I wanted it to be easy for me to grab the sheets that I wanted. And I really like how these are turning out. So I decided to share with you guys as I do the next color, which I'm pretty sure is going to be yellow. I think it's yellow that I filmed. So I am going to start by making myself a little bit of extra room here. And I'm actually going to start with purple because I don't have too many purple. So I thought that would be a good starting point to share with you guys. So I just run a strip of ATG along the card, uh, which is much easier than running it along the plastic backing because ATG actually won't stick to that backing. And I'm just alternating the wide ends of the enamel dot strips so that they're on one side and then the other side basically to allow me to fit as many as possible. So as you can see, I didn't even fill a whole card there, but when it comes to the yellow, I'm going to have to kind of take a little bit of a more complicated approach here because I want to keep all of the similar shapes together because I'm most likely to go looking for them and, and I don't want them spread across. Like I don't want some hearts on one card and then some, and then no hearts and then hearts again on another card. I want all those hearts to be on the same card. And then all of the other non dot shapes, I also want to be on the same card just because I am more likely to look for those at the same time. Uh, and so I'm just figuring out how I can fit as many of these sets of hearts as possible. These are from think Bella Boulevard and uh, they came on as a set of multicolored hearts like each card had one of these yellows and then a, an orange and a green and a blue and so on uh, and I just have them 
cut up. I had so many packages of them that I end up with multiple sets of each color, which I like that. I, I, it's nice to be able to, to uh, be generous when you're decorating your scrapbook page and not have to worry about using the last of your supplies on something. Um, it, I find that it helps me to not worry too much about finding the perfect embellishment or the perfect place to use something when I know I've got plenty of it. So as you can see, I'm just um, trimming off the extra backing there where it overhangs the card just so that the card will fit nice and neatly into the place that I want it to fit. Now I did have more of these hearts and I just decided to add them to the back. This is actually the only time I'm adding anything to the backs of these cards. All of these cards are going to be one-sided but because it's exactly the same thing I thought I would just put it the extra ones on the back side and I'm actually going to try to use those back side ones up first so I don't have kind of like half taken from one side and half taken from the other side and so although you can see that I have all those shapes up there I'm actually going to save any shapes or any special ones uh, to do at the end because I have much more of the plain dots than anything else so I'm going to fill up as many pages as I can with just the plain dots and then we'll see if I have any carryover plain dots that I have to add with the shapes if I had put the shapes first then I wouldn't might not have spaced them properly and so here I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to fit the very most onto this little sheet. And at first I was centering them because I thought it would look nicer, but as I went along with this project, I ended up shifting them so that they're all over to one side so that this little strips all start over uh, flush with one of the edges of the card. And that gives me more space on the other end to uh, put any extras like any of the smaller little strips that might not be so long because there's more missing. So I am trying to alternate them from um, the the wide ones to the skin to the tiny ones just so that more fit so that more rows, rows fit that way. And as I'm going through the yellow I'm noticing that I have some yellow that have a real distinct greenish look to them. Actually they look quite green in this video right now but they don't look quite that green in real life. Um, they're, they're more yellow that little pile that I've got accumulating up there. Uh, so because those have a real greenish look to them I'm going to put them on a separate card. So this card will be my yellow yellows and then my greeny yellows will be on a different card. And again that will make it easier when it comes to bringing these cards out to my table to sample them. I If I know that I don't want any greeny yellows I can just leave that whole card right in the bin still and not bring it over to my table. So that's what I'm thinking about. That's kind of like the thought process. And it is really hard to stick an ATG adhesive to, <laughs> to the plastic backing, as you can see there. But if you can just get it in there, like now that it's between the two levels, like between the two layers of plastic, it will stick. It will stay put now. It's just a matter of getting it off of your fingers and onto the plastic is really tricky. So I used my uh, little tool from Creative Memories to do that. One thing that I really wished I had done and that I would recommend you do if you're going to do something like this is trim the plastic down as much as you can. Like when I was first separating them out into strips, I left big wide margins on some of them and so you'll see that now I have to go back and trim down some of those and I really wished I had just trimmed them while I was still in trimming mode. Uh, the other thing that I'm just keeping in mind as I do this is that I would like to have uh, the enamel dots stay in their original places on that backing whenever possible because I find that as soon as I take it off and put it back on the sheet it will stick back on the sheet but not quite as good as it did when it was originally manufactured and placed on that sheet so I'm trying not to move the dots around too much for that reason although I, I will sometimes shift them around especially if it means getting more on the sheet so as you can see here I'm having to stop my gluing process and trim down some of these little pieces wish I'd done this before so that's my little tip for you if you're doing this learn from my mistakes and do it uh, 
do all your cutting at once because it's just much easier. And you see that I'm just leaving that gap. There are four big ones and then a big space and then one little one there on one of those strips. I'm just leaving that because if I don't leave it today after I use these a couple of days, they'll a couple of times there'll be gaps all over the place on these cards and that's okay. I don't mind the gaps as long as most of my enamel dots can stick. And so uh, in this case, for example, I know I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have room for everything. So I'm just leaving the gaps. And sometimes I'll go and I'll pick some off of the sheets and put them into like into the spaces where the gaps are. But sometimes I don't. I'm not being too, too cautious or careful about it. My main goal here is to get this project done. It doesn't have to be pretty or, you know, really well organized. It's already better organized than it was <laughs> before. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit more to four times the speed just so that you guys can uh, get a sense of what it's like to glue all these little pieces into place. I'm really pleased with this. I kind of, I did a Pinterest search of enamel dot storage before I did this. And now for this sheet, I'm just leaving it, even though there's a couple of different shades of yellow there, I just trimmed it down so it would fit on the sheet. And I'm just going to leave the whole thing intact because they're all yellow. So it doesn't matter that there's uh, some are different than others. And then I think I'm going to be able to fit all of the strange uh, shaped ones. So this little packet that I just put on that whole sheet of them, those are uh, sparkly ones. So that's what makes them different. And so they, this is all unique dots right here. So I did a Pinterest search and it, I saw a couple of people who were storing their enamel dots on what looked to me like cards. Um, and so I really liked that idea. And that's how I got this idea. It wasn't my own. So aren't they beautiful? Okay, so my enamel dot storage is done now, so I thought I would uh, come back and share with you guys how it went. So it didn't take too, too long to come up with all of these sheets of enamel dots. It wasn't too bad. It took me, I, I guess, most of a morning. Kind of going back and forth between this and family stuff. So as you can see, all of my enamel dots are laid out on separate sheets. And if you look really closely, you can probably see where the strips are. And I basically just did my best to fit as many as I could onto a sheet and trying to keep in mind which colors I'd be reaching for at similar times. So I wanted to put similar kinds of um, colors on the similar sheets. So for example, I tried to put only dots on most of the sheets and then have a sheet that had all of the shapes together so that I didn't have hexagons and stars spread out across all of my sheets of pink. So these are my three sheets of pink. One has specialty shapes and then the other two are just dots and these are the lighter ones and these are the darker ones and then I did the same with red with red all of my dots and shapes fit on one except of course these hearts I have hearts like this in multiple colors and so I just fill a sheet with them when that's the case and here's my sheet of all orange specialty shapes and these have like super cool texture on them so I'm putting those with my specialty ones and here's some more specialty orange. These are pearlized and these are glittery and these are kind of really cool sparkly. And then here are my plain orange. These are peachy orange or coral. And then these are orangey orange, like a lighter orange. And then these are darker orange. Then I have some orange hearts and then we go to yellow, yellow specialty shapes and some dots. These are yellows including greeny yellows and these are just yellow yellows and then these are the hearts and I had too many hearts to fit in the yellows. I had too many to fit on one sheet so I just put some on the back. This is the only time that I put something on the back. Then I have greens, just the green dots and then these are green dots and shapes. 
And then I have going into the minty greens. Again, some of my cards don't have too many on them. These are the specialty shapes in the minty greens. Specialty kind of textures. These ones have sparkles and faceted and pearlized. More mints and turquoises. These are kind of specialty ones. More mints. These are turquoisey tealy. And then we go into blues, specialty shapes, specialty finishes, the hearts, and then we have all the dots that are blue. And then purple, not too many purple. So those are my colored enamel dots and they fit really nicely. I'm not sure if I said it on the video before, but these are three and a half this way and five and a half, no, three and a quarter this way and five and a half this way. And that's just what I measured to fit in this, in this little bin. Then here I have some specialty shapes and I sorted these ones into blacks, whites, grays, and silvers. So that's all of these sheets. And I usually kept creams in a separate category, um, but I didn't here because they fit best this way. So there are some creams on this one as well. And then there are some creams on this one as well because it was just a mixed pack. And then we go into some browns and, and golden colors like metallics, so bronzes and whatnot and golds. And I love these faceted ones, they're so pretty. And then we go into creams. It looks yellow in my camera, but these are creams. And these Primo ones are so awesome. I love them, they're so pretty. And then we have multicolored ones that I guess I could go through and add these to the colored sheets that I already have, but I decided not to. It's nice to have a couple of little assortments of color schemes that go together. So a lot of these are Freckled Fawn from different kits that I've received over the years. These are We Are Memory Keepers. These are Illustrative Faith, and I just adored these, so I didn't want to split them up. They're just such a nice set. And then I do have a little stamp in here. It's just a wooden block stamp that my friend Christine gave me. Um, it's just holding the space there to keep my... Otherwise, these ones will kind of like slide down and be sitting this way instead of vertically. So it just holds them up. So I am very, very pleased with these. I can't wait to scrapbook and be able to just kind of decide what shade I want and reach in and bring just one sheet to my, um, or a couple of different sheets to my scrap space instead of having to bring this huge assortment of enamel dots every time I want to choose. So thanks so much for watching. Have a really great scrappy week and leave me a comment down below that tells me how you store your enamel dots. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, you can check out any of these other videos if you've missed any along the way. And I will see you next time with another scrapbooking process video.